guys. Uh, welcome to the new podcast for the Nathan B. Studios channel. Uh, today with me, I have Jesse, who's from the UK. Hi. Say hi. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, what I'll probably do is uh, on you guys' screen right now, you'll probably see a bunch of different links to to the part that you want to see. So if you want to see it, something about Call of Duty or Until Dawn, Murdered Soul Suspect, or the League of Legends, you guys can click on that link, and it'll bring you right to that spot. So, yeah, so the first topic that we're going to start into is the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare game that's coming out. And, Jesse, what was your experience um, with Call of Duty games? Well, I haven't played since Modern Warfare 2, um, due to finance. Yeah. And issues with my Xbox, because everyone gets that. But, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, um, I was really young when I played it, and so getting into the game and playing competitively with others, it was really shit. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's <laughs> okay. Just, I, I hated snipers with a passion, um, and so... Especially on, on Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, yeah, it's just... I kind of got chucked out of the community for my distaste for snipers <laughs> and didn't go back since. Yeah. So did you um, ever play uh, the one before that basically started that whole multiplayer scene? Um, Call of Duty 4. I did. Um, I think I had the the, the, COD, <laughs> <laughs> the Call of Duties I remember um, were... World at War, um, Modern Warfare, and then Modern Warfare 2. Okay. So you were kind of, like, in the golden age for, like, the Call of Duties. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, picking up Call of Duty 4 for the first time, and mm -hmm. that was, like, the game that you, that everyone had, everyone was playing at the time. Mm -hmm. it, it was kind of one of those games that it you played it so much because it was, like, a different day every single time you played with your yeah. friends. Yeah. And so it really had that repetitive kind of gameplay that you can say, okay, well, you know, I sucked yesterday, you know, maybe I'm better today. And then mm -hmm. you pick it up, and it's a million times more fun. Prestiging, you know, was always sweet. <laughs> I don't know I why. Never, I never prestiged. Really? Ever. <laughs> I was that bad at the game. I was such a nerd back then. I prestiged, I think, eight times, seven or eight times. Jeez. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I was into it. But um, as as soon as as the series kind of went on, um, mm. I felt like it it sort of it died off after yeah. the uh, the two companies sort of split, which is uh, mm -hmm. I forget who makes the two, Infinity Ward and someone else. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> but when the two uh, when those two companies split, it kind of the games didn't really feel consistent, but it kind of felt like okay, Call of Duty, and then you play it, and then there's something broken with it, and then you don't touch it for, like, 14 months, like... <laughs> yeah. Because, um, as soon as I started, uh, watching things on the Black Ops, when Black Ops was coming out... Mm -hmm. um, oh, I wanted Black Ops so much. Yeah, like, I did too, but then, um, I don't know, the, the community director, I forget who his name is, the community director for it, um, was giving some ramble about how um, sniping in that game was too unfair, like how the um, the quick scoping and stuff, mm -hmm. like as opposed to Modern Warfare 2, you know, which everyone was like running around mm -hmm. with snipers. But I feel like it wasn't as much as an issue as he built it up to be. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when they started implementing that whole zooming in, and then the cursor gets all out of whack. Do you ever remember that? Yep. Yeah, I remember that. Like, as soon as you zoomed in, it, like, went all the way off into your corner, and you're like, what the hell? Like, that's not, like, that's not how it works. <laughs> and so it, it got me super frustrated, so I, I kind of, like, stepped away from the game, and I, mm -hmm. I sucked at it, and I lost all touch after that. <laughs> That kind of sucks. Yeah, it was a huge bummer, but um, yeah. now they're uh, talking about a whole uh, whole bunch of new games that they're kind of bringing out for the um, Xbox, which I'm excited for that, but um, 
Call of Duty Advanced Warfare doesn't seem like it's going to be one of them. I haven't heard that much about it. Um, it's like, I'm seeing more of other games getting bigger than exactly. the Call of Duty series. And yeah, that's that kind of sense. sad. It, it is, but um, I feel like it, it it's due because, um, yeah. you, you know, things like uh, The Last of Us, they just came out with a remastered. Mm-hmm. So people are, were kind of hyped up more about that than they actually are for the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Yeah. You yeah. know, because there's, I don't know, it just seems overpriced and regurgitated, and it just doesn't seem like it's going to be mm-hmm. anything new. Um, you know, you show up there and you get some package for, like, $120 that is, like, completely pointless. <laughs> like, Oof. yeah, it's it just doesn't seem, I don't know right to me, but it, it also mm-hmm. just kind of seems like a waste. I think even so, people will still be playing Oh yeah, um, the old games. Yeah. I mean, I occasionally, you know, I'll pick up a Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2 or something like that and try to, mm-hmm. you know, get back into it, but, you know, people just have modded lobbies now, and you know, it's kind of hard to get back into that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, the, the one... Um, thing new that they're bringing to the uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is the um, exoskeleton. Have you heard anything about that? No, not at all. Tell me oh, more. Okay, so the exoskeleton is basically like this. I don't. The best way they can explain it is that it's almost like crutches that go onto your arm, like go onto your body. <laughs> it's, right. It's so like terrible to explain. But you have, you know, this metal that, like, shoots up your legs and arms. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like splints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, each different kind of exosuit gives you, like, different abilities. So there's one that, like, lets you, like, double jump, or there's one that lets you, like, have a super punch, or you right. can summon some riot shield out of your arm or something like that. Like, now, with all of this, you know new future technology stuff being added to the game, do you think it's going to really make that big of an impact? It sounds like Halo Reach all over again. <laughs> In a way, it does, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, do you think it's going to be as successful as Halo Reach, or no? No, I don't think it will be. I really don't think it will be. With Halo Reach, um, Halo was in its prime at that point. Yeah, Halo, you're right. Yeah, and then the beta came out, and you could get it through, oh, was it ODST, I mm-hmm. think? Yeah. Um, and so people already got a taster of that, whereas I don't see this happening with Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, um I, I think you're probably that, right with that beta thing, too. hmm People need to feel that they're special enough to get that little taste. Yeah, and, uh, you know, like, it, it goes both ways, because... A beta mm-hmm. is, you know, essentially like a, it's like a testing ground yeah. for developers and things like that. So, yep. it may mean they can really benefit from it because, I mean, you know, they could probably add some a little bit of tweaking, you know, right before the mm-hmm. game comes out just to try to get that final touches. Um, instead of like Black Ops, you know, where no beta, they go, they get into the game. And then all of a sudden, sniping is too overpowered, and then, you know, they had to go back and forth and back and forth, updating left and right Mm -hmm. to try to fix that, which, you know, didn't really seem, you know, right, but I don't know. That's just my taste on that. (laughs) I I I think making adjustments once the game has been fully released is just a bit bit cheap. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because it's like people join in the game, and they want to get into it and get used to it. Like yeah. As a, at the same time as everyone else. Whereas if you're constantly making adjustments when it's just been released, then no one's going to feel settled. Yeah. No, that completely yeah. makes sense. But, um, I mean, were you ever really, like, competitive with the Call of Duty series? or? I never prestiged. <laughs> I think that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Um, the, the reason I asked that is because... Um, a lot of people are, they're giving, you know, hypotheses mm-hmm. and hypotheses, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, on, this, on this game because um, they're expecting it to be a more faster-paced game. 
as right. compared to any of uh, the other games before. You know, you have things like your super sprint and jump, and you can slide mm-hmm. now. But I don't really know if that's the direction that they want to be shooting for, because I feel like... I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's not the direction that they're shooting for is because um have you ever played the game Quake before? Oh god, Quake. I haven't. <laughs> it's on my to playlist. Yeah, Quake it was like the old school like fastest Quake pace. and Doom. Yeah. yeah, that was like the fastest pace shooter anyone's ever encountered and mm-hmm. I feel like it's just going to get to that point where it's like okay, you're going to have the people that are like way, like, experienced with this, like, they're, like, hitting collaterals mm-hmm. like no other, and then you're going to have, you know, the other people on the spectrum that are just, like, you know, baby steps crawling, like... Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like it's going to be very uneven. It's hard to make a balance, though, isn't it? Cause it is. If, if you make it harder for the really good competitive players, then it's going to mean no one wants to start playing yeah. from the beginning, because, you know... You're not going to be good. It's going to be impossible. Mm-hmm. So, um, kind of stepping away from the multiplayer scene, have you ever played mm-hmm. any of the uh, single players for the Call of Duty franchises? Um, the story mode? Yeah. I was not good <laughs> at Call of Duty. <laughs> okay. So, basically, um, a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people are saying that the um, the campaign to this is mm-hmm. going to be kind of wonky, but, like, wonky in the way that's, like, I don't know, like, a movie, like, let's take a movie and, like, compare it to, like, Sharknado. Like, the yeah. Sharknado is just, like, way outrageous, like, that's never going to happen in a million years, and I feel like the campaign's kind of, like, stepping towards that sort of realm where it's just like completely out of this world like sliding out of buildings like 14 guys and you're like holding two machine guns and like shooting helicopters in midair like i feel like that's never gonna happen Mm -hmm. it it, it's really far-fetched yeah i mean (laughs) it's completely far-fetched but you know i feel like when you're Making a game mostly for its multiplayer, I feel like when you dabble at the single player, I feel like that's kind of a really bad way about going about it. Oh, yeah. If you're going to make a good game. Try that a little bit harder. Yeah. And they tried doing something like that by adding Kevin Spacey and the the (laughs) ghost or whatever. And I was just like, uh... Really? It was so... I was just like, this is... No, this is not where we want to be going. (laughs) Yeah, it was terrible. But, I mean, because you're not um, a competitive, like, you know, Call of Duty player, Mm. what are some of the other games that you, like, enjoy playing just for the single-player experience? Or maybe just a story that you enjoyed? Um, I was very much, and always will be, a Halo fan. I grew up playing Halo, um, and I loved the Halo campaign. Mm-hmm. I found it I found it really easy playing a beginner uh, <laughs> yeah. with my skill level. It was, just, it, it was fun, and it it was very rewarding, like turning on the party mode and um, killing the little triangle monsters and watching them explode <laughs> in confetti. Yeah, it's it's very rewarding in comparison to say Call of Duty. So, like, you would say it's, like, a more, like, user-friendly kind of game? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so, y- you're into, like, the Halo series, but you you were mm-hmm. never, like, um, you were never into, like, the horror scene, were you? Um, I, I don't know, um, always been a bit of a thrill seeker. Yeah. Like, adrenaline junkie. Yeah. Take me to theme parks now. <laughs> but... Horror games are something I've only recently discovered. So So it's not too, you know, like, you're just like, oh, yeah, a scary game. I'm totally going to do it. (laughs) I I I would prefer to watch someone play it than play it myself because it's so much safer (laughs) being able to close the tab in a millisecond when something pops up in your face. Yeah. I feel like... like that's that's the people nowadays is that they're more likely mm-hmm. to watch someone play a scary game because they're too afraid to actually play play it. <laughs> yeah. 
Which I mean, if that's if that's how you want to look at it, yeah, sure. Um, but um, you you watch people like Mark Markiplier play those games. Yeah, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, um, RPG Minx is a little bit of horror games, as far as I know. All right. Yeah. So when you um when you watch these people play these games, um, mm-hmm. do you ever really like almost kind of like critique the game? Like you kind of like get, like, a taste for the game, like, you're thinking, okay, well, if Amnesia is too medieval, let's try looking for a scary game that's more modern or something. I do. Um, I like comparing how completely different one horror game can be from another. Okay. Um, there was a game that Markiplier played um, from the perspective of a baby. Yeah. I can't remember for the life of me what it was oh, called. Oh, um... The uh, something about the sleep, among the sleep. Among the sleep. There we go. Um, and it was so different. I, I re- even now I really want to play it because it tells you from a completely different perspective. Instead of being the normal grown-up human man or woman that you always seem to be, you're a little baby, and yeah. everything is told from the baby's perspective, and that's so cool. Yeah. Why well, wouldn't want to be a baby? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. um, looking, looking at these, like, horror games, I feel like y- yep. you can tell a story very, mm-hmm. uh, uniquely as compared to a Call of Duty game, you know, where you're flying out of airplanes, shooting people, <laughs> like, blah, like, <laughs> I feel like, feel like horror games are very, um, down to earth. It, yeah, they're very story based. And, um, this new game that's coming out, uh, Until Dawn, mm-hmm. it was, you know, pushed back 20, 2013 or whatever, the, the PS3, yeah. and now they're bringing it back. And uh, let me just read the uh, introduction here. Mm-hmm. So it says, When eight friends become trapped on a remote mountain getaway gone wrong, things quickly turn to sinister, and they start to suspect that they aren't alone. How do you feel about this first, like, few sentences about this game? Um, I can list you five horror movies that <laughs> that description perfectly. Yeah. Um, do you think it's going to be exactly, like, how it sounds? Do you think it's going to be, like, one of those stupid horror movies that you watch? It, it does sound like it will be. It. I get that impression. It's not exactly pulling me in right now. Yeah, because it sounds like every, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> every Cliche single... Hollywood. Yeah. Scary movie. Yeah. yeah. But, um, do you think it's do you think it's a change of pace when it comes to the horror games, though? Do you think this could be the potential, like, bridge between, okay, a person that doesn't like horror games to a person that does like horror games? I think it will be. <laughs> it has the right publicity yeah. for it. Um... It's new. It doesn't... I don't get the impression it's terribly scary. Mm Mm-hmm. So I think it will bring more people into the horror genre for games. And I think we kind of need that in the horror game industry. No, that totally makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. So um, moving on into other gaming news. Yep. Um... We have this game that just recently came out, uh, June 3rd, 2014, called Murdered Soul Suspect. And I wouldn't quite classify this as being a horror game, but I would classify it as kind of being an adventure kind of action game, I guess. Hmm. Now, um, would you kind of throw this game to people who are kind of new to you know, maybe gaming in general, maybe if they're looking for a casual kind of game to really enjoy, like, the story for? I... Oh, that's, that's, that's a tough question, but, um... <laughs> it's not a game I would play. Yeah. I'm not into the whole mystery, um, crime game. But and you're I a very experienced friends. gamer, right? I would say I'm experienced, but... <laughs> I just I, mean you've been I, playing I, it for a while. I've been playing games my entire life, yeah. Okay. So, this game isn't exactly something, you know, you no. are looking for. <laughs> no, it's, it's not to my taste at all, but, <laughs> but then again, there's the whole fantasy, ghostly side of it all, and 
sort of intrigues me, but sort of makes me turn my nose up. It's a difficult one. I don't think I know until I play it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think I kind of I feel that way with you. It, I feel like it's a game that's not really in its time. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like looking at this game, I uh, played a little bit of it, it felt more like I was playing, like, Carmen Sandiego. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like I was playing something that wasn't in its time. I feel like it, mm-hmm. this this game should have been released, like, maybe when the Xbox 360 first came out. Yeah. And then yeah. that would have been, like, you know, the games that, like, they bring to, like, E3 that they show, and they're like, okay, look mm-hmm. at what, what we've done. But it's not, like, a game that should be, like... New genre, like, ever. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like this isn't one of those games, you know, that's for the experienced gamer, a person that's looking for something new. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's not something I'd give to someone only just getting into games. Yeah, yeah. Put them off. Yeah, I, I would kind of stray them away from this, but, um, mm. you know, I, I'm a very open with new games, you know, I'll, I'll give them a yeah. shot just to see, you know, okay, if I really hate this game, I'll, I'll play it for 15 minutes, and, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> and and just so I can say that, okay, yeah, I played it, it's not very good, but um, now th- they're talking about making a Wii U version, or at least they were discussing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Basically, on an article on GameSpot, it's talking about uh, Square Enix talks 1080p for murdered on Xbox One slash PS4 and why there is no Wii U version. Which, do you think this game has even the potential to be a Wii U game? God, no. No, <laughs> the market for the Wii is so different to, like, the Xbox and the PlayStation. Yeah, you're completely right about that. Yeah. Because, um... With the Wii U, it, I feel like it's more directed towards, like, that party game kind of player, like... Oh, yeah. The younger kids, more yeah. active people. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really meant for that serious gamer. Like, okay, Call of Duty goes first day, let's do this on my yeah. Wii gun plastic thing. Like, <laughs> like no. Like, <laughs> like, okay, I played Call of Duty Black Ops on the Wii... And that is the slowest game of my entire life. Like, you you sit there, and you have your little plastic gun, and it takes you, like, 15 minutes just to line up your gun to shoot the guy, and you're just sitting there staring at each other for 20 minutes. Like, it's it's so bad. (laughs) But, again, if you're looking for something new... I would say give it a try. Why not? Just to say, mm-hmm. you know, this is a game that you you have tried, but, you know, maybe there are people out there that like this game. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think there is definitely a niche market for this yeah. This game, and they'd, they'd love it, but I yeah, don't think no, we right. are that market. Yeah, no. <laughs> we are not that market. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about Call of Duty, um, we talked about horror games, and we're talking about these action-adventure games, and we're going to go something completely off-the-market kind of um, away, which is the uh, murdered, or not murdered, Soul Suspect, derp. We just talked about that. Yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> League of Legends uh, MOBA game. So, obviously I know your thoughts on this game, but why don't you tell everyone else? Um, I started playing League in December, um, of 2013, and since then I've gotten to level 30, and I'm debating going into ranked, and it's it's a great journey, it's something I love, I'm on League at least two or three times a day, mm-hmm. um, it's just, I don't know, it's one of those games that, despite how kind of repetitive it is, like, there's no chain, there's no storyline, yeah. I love it, I do yeah. love it. That's a very interesting point that you bring up, that, you know, this game, you know, has, I think, I think at this moment, the most amount of uh, members on mm-hmm. it, but um, that there's no story, you know, there's no, yeah. like, here's, like, how to get from point A to point B, and there's all these different events that happen, you know, like Call of mm-hmm. Duty's gameplay, like, 
doing stupid things like sniping some yeah. Russian leader or something stupid like that. Yeah. But it's it's one of those games that is like, okay, here's what you have to do. You have to destroy this base and go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel that's like kind of what I love about it. Yeah, that's the thing that you know people like about that game is that you can play it how you want to play it. You know. Yeah. You if, make it your own game. Yeah, which is you know that's that's a thing that not a lot of developers or not a lot of games do mm-hmm. because. Um, it's risky. I, yeah, it is risky. It's a risky move because, you know, if you're playing a game like Until Dawn or Murdered Soul Suspect, like, that's not really, like, yeah. that's not a game that you can kind of make it your own and kind of, like, mm-hmm. experience it for what it is. So, um, the patch rundown that they gave for the uh, 4.14 and uh, 4.13, how do you feel about those? Um, in general? Um, I think they're very dramatic patches because they are going to be the last big patches until the end of um, LCS. Yeah. As I believe they mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, The adjustments, I think, are good. And the new champ. Um, But, oh, I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a bit much for one patch. I, I don't know. I see where you're coming it, from, though. Yeah. It affects junglers more than it would a laner like myself. Yeah. Um, I should, we should probably explain, you know, what kind of players yep. we are. Yep. Um, okay. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm a very... Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm super jungler, but I'm a very open person when it comes to the different roles, so I play mm-hmm. a, a lot of different roles over the spectrum. So, uh, some of the roles that I like to play are, I do like to play ADC sometimes, but, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, jungling with Lee Sin, I just sort of picked up, and, um, Assassins, I've been playing very Mm -hmm. good with, um, Talon lately, uh, kind of, kind of worth his, uh, burst AD, and he kind of has that utility to, to kind of, uh, zap away, he can kind of, like, uh, juke the people out if you know if he's caught in a sticky mm-hmm. situation, which which kind of helps a lot there. But um, you know when I heard the uh, the four point one three patch about the uh, Lee Sin changes, you know I was kind of upset. Um, <laughs> I was kind of upset because you know it, like out of any of any of the things that they could have changed they decided to choose that, and then it's, like, no patches for, like, the rest of the month, you know? Yeah. Which is kind of a bummer for me. Mm-hmm. But, um, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I, I get where they're coming from with that, aggressive junglers, but I feel like if if the junglers are becoming too, um, like, I just, dominant. Yeah, if they're becoming too dominant over the game, like they're knocking out a game in 15, 20 minutes, there's like a counter for you to do that, but I feel like it's the player's play style. Like, okay, they didn't let that jungler, or like they let that jungler go in and steal their blue buff. Well, it's like, okay, well, you had an, an option to counter that, but they didn't. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what kind of, you know, made them seem too dominant. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What, right. are you, what are your views on it? Um, well, my main role is ADC support in top lane. Mm-hmm. I don't go near me at all because it terrifies me. <laughs> and jungle, I have no experience with. Um, but I've played lanes like um, my latest game was the new champ. I was dominating top lane. No. It was all good. It was great. <laughs> and, um, and then the jungler comes in like two or three times. Um, during the laning phase and he's pushed me completely back and therefore we lost the game ultimately and it was one of those big dominating champs that needed nothing really badly because yeah. although there are some people that play them and they're just okay they're just like normal junglers when you get an experienced jungler like an experienced Lee Sin like you for example and they're really really good at what they do it's just impossible to pull it back like yeah. you can gank like that I feel and like it, it kind of ruins the game. Yeah, it does. I feel like it, it, it can ruin the game. 
But mm-hmm. um, there, you know, there are ways to get around that. But you know, I, I feel like the the whole idea of junglers being too dominant lies in the players and not really the developers. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there are ways to get around that, and you know, as tough as they may be, you know. Your whole team might need to go in there and steal both their busts just to throw him off his game, you know, and kind of have him bait into your guys' buffs so you can, like, try mm-hmm. to take him out or something. But, you know, I don't know. That's just me. That's just from a jungler's standpoint. <laughs> Admittedly, in my last game, I had no teamwork for my own jungler. Yeah. So which, think... which, you know, that can bur- work. Yeah. <laughs> that can work. <burp. laughs> That can work uh, both ways because, um, you know, if you if you have a really shitty jungler, then that throws off your entire team. Or if you have someone that, you know, that likes to work by himself, you know. Yeah. yeah. That's very interesting. Um, so you have the new champion, Nar, right? I do indeed. Okay. Tell me about Nar because I absolutely have no idea anything about Nar except that he was <laughs> overly priced and... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all I know about him. So you're gonna have to give us the rundown on Nar. Okay, what I know of Nar so far is he's a top laner, um, not overly tanky as it goes, but you build Eddy and attack speed. Okay. So damage and speed. But I, when I've played him so far, I've gone more speed because it seems way more effective than going damage. Um, my main issue with Nar is his Q. He's meant to be a really um, difficult champ to play. Mm-hmm. Like when you click on him, the difficulty bar is like right to the end. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. And then I went into a bot game and I start shooting the queue, only to realise that it takes some practice to learn to catch it. I mean, if you play champs like uh, Draven. Yeah. yeah To where you really okay. have to catch his boomerang blades or whatever. Or well, there's an 18 second cooldown, and that can ruin the engage. Yeah. Majorly. Yeah. Because um, your Q is your main form of attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I, like, I like like no. I feel like that's that's a very interesting you know point to yeah. bring up is the is the difficulty between. The champions is because you know when you when you play someone like Draven or you play someone like Nar, I feel mm-hmm. like you could either kick ass with that character or you can, you yeah. know, suck. suck. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I I feel like you know it, it's a it's a weird concept to me because it, it's like okay, how good do you play your game is how often you catch a stick. <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of what it relies on for some champs. <laughs> Which, it's it's a goofy concept to me, because to me that doesn't really make any sense, you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. <laughs> Just because I miss my yeah. boomerang doesn't make me a bad league player. Yeah, and, you know, I feel like if you're going to play someone like Nar or Draven, mm-hmm. you're getting yourself into something huge. <laughs> yeah, you need to... Practice. I feel like that that champion is re- reserved for like the experienced players and and things mm-hmm. like that. All right. I, yeah. So what were you gonna say? Were you gonna say something? I, I was gonna say as, as long as you practice. Like I don't see Nar as as difficult as they made him out to be, and I think he will be OP once people get used to the gameplay. You have the game style. You have to adapt. So do you think this champion is gonna be more seen in like? Um, uh, tournaments or world championship? I, I, maybe not this one, but next year, yeah, I think so. All right. Unless he gets nerfed before then, which I think he will. I think he will too, because generally there's this rule that when a new champion comes out within the month or you know within the mm-hmm. best, or the the first three weeks or something, uh, there's normally a patch for that champion. Yeah. Um, I don't. It will be nerfed. Yeah, I don't know if you remember uh, Darius when he first came out. I don't think I was playing back when Darius came out. Okay, when Darius first came out, because I started playing League of Legends as soon as the game was released, and I, I all right, yeah. It. And when Darius first came out, it was it was almost impossible to play the game. 
Um, do you know what his ultimate is, or no? Um, God, I think I played against him a few times, but I was always just Fiora, so I quit top lane for a while. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So Darius' ultimate, I'm pretty sure it's called Noxian Diplomacy, but right. it's, it's this ultimate where it does, like, 300 true damage or something like that, 350 true damage. Oh. And it basically, if you look at you know a person's health bar, it takes out three um, little bars there. Mm-hmm. But um, it, it's basically like the finisher of all finishers. Like it's like take Garen's ultimate and put yep. that like as if if you were to ultimate someone and you killed them, it would automatically refresh. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. It's like- it's like Pentakill City, so it's basically as soon as you you know had a team that was all on pretty low health, you just throw Darius in there and and oh. he just ultimate everyone and his ultimate would just keep on getting refreshed. And That's so like, like Fiora. Yeah. <laughs> and so like for the first like three weeks, that champion was just like OP as hell. But then like oh, they geez. obviously had to you know change him and mm-hmm. and so now they. He still does have a cooldown. It's just not, you know, if he kills someone, it's not as long of a cooldown. Yeah. But still, it was just ridiculous. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I, I tried to think what would have happened to me. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna that's gonna be it for the uh, for the podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, be sure to leave a like and uh, comments if you guys like, want to see more, want to see something specific. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you a lot to our guest, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> um, we'll definitely be sure to have her, you know, in more future podcasts. And, uh, you know, hopefully um, we'll, we can even get some League of Legends uh, gameplay um, and we can even do some live comms or something. Good, everyone can see how bad I am at it. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we can do this thing where we'll play different champions and we, we can kind of oh, teach yeah. them yeah, the ropes on how to play this champion. Sweet. All right. So that's going to be it for today's podcast. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, if you guys you know enjoyed it, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you guys <laughs> later. <laughs> Bye.